Hello, how are you doing today? Today I'm going to show you bits that I recorded from making an apron for my friend. Um, the instructions were to make it frilly um, and red and white gingham. So, and cute, it had to be cute. So I found a few patterns which I sent to them and I'll link the one I ended up sort of using roughly for inspiration and measurements. Um, but I just started ignoring measurements once I had the sort of apron skirt bit and the upper top bit and then I just sort of started cutting and seeing where it would go so enjoy it's gathering time I have my sort of upper part this is gonna come here and get all gathered in so I've done two rows of stitching up the top here if you can see that I don't know so the next thing to do is I want to do two runs all along this length I have thread that I've taken from basting the first thing I need to do is thread my needle because this is gingham this is going to be nice and easy for me to just follow one straight line so I'm gonna just go in here and I'm just doing a running stitch just in and out in and out in and out and in and out this row isn't too bad I'm just sort of trying to keep things mostly even the trickier bit comes when I'm trying to line up the second row as sort of neatly to this as I can. Having camera directly in front of me isn't great for showing stitches. Must remember to keep a smiling face as I do this. Otherwise when everything's sped up and I'm just like frowning. One trick for pulling a long thread through is to loop it around a finger or whatever and then you get the tangles back at this bit and not right where everything's going in. Just puts a little bit of tension in different places. I've started stitching along there, which you may or may not be able to see, and I just now need to keep going. So I will do a little bit more and then I will skip ahead magically in time. It's a problem of having so many things I want to do. I have sketched out the plan I want to do. I'm actually, I sent a friend a few different sort of links for apron designs and patterns and such. And we're sort of, sort of taking measurements off one, but that one doesn't have nearly enough ruffles. It needs more flounce. So I'm gonna do the basic structure like the pattern I found, which I will link for you. Um, is this where I start doing calls to action? I don't know. Don't want it gathering up too much just now. That's for later. Get these loose bits going. I haven't done this much. I need to do that. One, two, three five more times? I don't know. I'll be back later. Okay, so I've finished the gathering stitches, of which I've done two parallel lines, trying to line the stitches up as much as possible. And I want to try and gather this down to about 10 inches. So I've got a ruler in front of me. I want to go to this point here um, for this side. So that's going much smaller. So I'll just sort of drag this along a bit this is really going to be quite scrunched up if that's there and this goes to about there okay okay so there's that I'll just need to 
even that up a little bit later and I'll stitch through it again to sort of line that up. The other side is going down to about 14, so not as much. Oh yeah, I sort of knotted these ends with my needle. I did a sort of twist here to make it more stable. So let's unpick this. And this side. Oh, I'm dropping things. Don't want to drop things. Oh, just move it little section by a little section, not wanting to pull too hard because I don't want to snap anything and have to start again. Let's move this all over to the middle. Right. So if I tie a knot here. Right, with that fixed there, this then lines up, lines up to here and about two inches. And I tie another knot. So that is essentially the top part done. So I will so I'll poke and stroke and sort out all of these wrinkles so they hang nicely. So this part will go here and then we'll have a ruffle and we'll have our belt and pocket in the lower bit with the pocket and it should just be really super cute so i've got some more measuring to do see you later next step is the pleating and it says to make 10 three quarter inch pleats evenly spaced so that's about every four or so inches so i want one from here and then, how am I going to do this? I'm thinking. Um, I want an edge here. And a quarter. I'm just going to measure, count and measure. It'll be about four of these. So one, two, three, four becomes the centre. One, two, four sticks out the side. And that's about one and a half, yeah. red line. Yeah, I want to see that red. Back to here. Here. This line. So I'm going to go up to there. Nice thing about using an ironing board with the whole sort of grill thing. Stab things straight down. I'm gonna move these pins. It's a bit convenient. Oh no! Oh no! I just dropped my pins. This is when you want the magnet. The iron tripped the breaker, which is, you know, fantastic. Do. I've seen here I've gone slightly out of sync. That's not good enough.
difference between the bit that's been ironed and hasn't. Right. So I have this fabric and I'm going to be using that for my waistband and such. Uh, and I thought you would probably enjoy this bit. Ooh, all the fabric dust. Whee! This is my workout for the week. Lovely. Are we ready again? Scissors, help me. Help me, scissors. Threads just jumping out. Boom! Lovely. So this part, fold it in half. This will be my waistband, and the rest of it can become ruffles and whatnot. So hooray! I need to, uh, but I want to sort of sew these ends together. And I'll do that until I reach where the skirt of the apron. Oh dear, don't want that there. So I'm going to sew the ends so that I can turn it inside out. And I'll sew that up until the point where it will meet the skirt of the apron. And then I can stitch that inside it, but with these ends turned in. Um, and I think that will give it quite a neat finish. So I need to measure up for that, decide how far out either side I'm going um, and it should give it a really nice fluffy bow when tied as well, which I'm quite looking forward to. So that is the plan there. Um, once I've tidied up all of these threads and whatnot. So yeah, next bit is a bit of sewing, presumably. Okay, so this is going to be Seagulls. Okay, so this is going to be the waistband. I've marked the two bits I want to start this. So I guess I get going. over there. So this is the skirt of this apron which has been ironed and pinned and generally speaking I am quite pleased with. So I'm gonna go with, I need to pick which side is going to be the top. I'm gonna make this zigzag. my pleats there without the need for pins which is quite useful. On to the other side. This is the most minimalist corner of my house right now. So, 
plan is to sew nice and neatly just below that so just in the top section of this red bit so and then once I've done this I will iron everything and just tack this now loose end to the underside but that is for in a little bit of time full steam ahead okay let's see how well this has worked so we flip this round this way and there we have well, I've pinched a little bit, but that's okay. That's okay. It's an apron! Yay! With little sausages at the moment, but that's, that's not going to last. So. I've just discovered with my fingers I still have a pin in this scene allowance. Yeah. I maybe should have trimmed these first. That, that would probably have been the smart way to go about it. Okay, so that's the inside. And then I just need to fold that up and under when I iron it. And that'll disguise that raw edge and I just stitch it all in. And everything will be lovely. I think everything will be lovely anyway. So yeah, I will see you later. Okay, so quick update. We have ironed my lovely long straps. Um, not particularly well, but I'll, I'll do that better later. The important bit that this is flat, this bit's tucked in and it's hiding my raw edge from this. So that'll be our lovely perfect front. Ooh, need to make sure that thread is rescued later through to the correct side. Um, yeah, so excited about that. Um, I have threaded my needle ahead of time. I'll just do that now actually. Uh, where's my... Okay, threads are rescued. So, raw edge is hidden and I'm just going to start at one end and whip stitch down just right into where it's been already sewn, um, which should keep things neat and hidden. And I don't need to worry too much about the edge that I'm starting on because this will be hidden when I add all of the many ruffles of which I intend to add many 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 okay there are almost certainly better angles for sharing this progress with you all the great youtubers give people hooks and things to interact with calls to action and I'm just like should have just stitched it carefully by machine, but I'm stubborn. You think gingham means that it's going to be super easy to do your pleats because, well, they're all going to be parallel because you can follow the lines, and then you realise that with a pattern as a check as small as this, that it can be quite tricky to, in fact, line things up precisely enough that you're not in some way displaying that mistake through the pattern. Okie dokie, so I'm going to draw a thread down this stripe so that I can get a nice, um, oh I dropped it, so that I can get a nice straight line to follow for cutting. Um, I would just tear the thing except that I want this I mean, I've, I've not, I want to make the best use of the fabric and if I tear it, then it'll be harder for me to do the rolled hem type fo small fold or that's not rolled hem. So I'm drawing this thread. Uh, so I've sort of played with the fuzzy edge a bit until I found one of the, I think this is, I think this is warp. 
Yeah, no, this is the warp. Um, um, so that it will draw out nicely. Because um, if I just go for tearing it, it will have much rougher edges. Um, and those will be harder to neatly and hem in a small way. So essentially I'm making a big poofy gather um, and just moving my hand, coming back down to the ungathered section. Oh, red coming loose. Um, and just moving all this gathered down. I'm not too bothered if this breaks a bit because I'll be able to find it and then follow it again. I would be bothered if I was doing this as a gather because if my gather breaks then it's not very useful as a gather. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm currently doing and we'll probably get sped up, I don't know. Because <laughs> the next thing to do is... How well can you see this? I'll just like peek underneath. Right, so I don't know if you can see... yeah. So when I move this in the light there, you can just sort of see I've got one slightly darker, it almost looks like a fold line. Um, and that's where the thread is now missing. This is the part where I take a big breath and my pair of scissors and I'm going to just be cutting along that line. Or as close to that line as I can, I guess. I don't mind if I'm a thread or so to either side. It's still going to be pretty, pretty neat. Um, so yeah. How's everybody doing? This is actually part of like a skill swap with a friend of mine. And this whole idea. I can't, I've been doing the, I've dragged this project out so long I can't remember when I've explained it in video and when I've not, but I'm just gonna witter away this time because I'm fairly certain we're recording audio this time. Uh, yeah, so they were like, so can I commission a frilly apron? And sort of red gingham, white frills, let's let's do something, let's do something cute. Um, and I wasn't really sure about how to go about setting the price. Um, because <laughs> pricing labour and skill gets complicated um, and money and friendship gets complicated so my suggestion was that I would make the thing I would very happily make the thing and they would either supply or pay for materials they're going to pay because I ordered these um, um, a not local to me but it is a local fabric shop um, who were fantastic and I got it in like four or five days including the weekend amazing this is why you should shop local buddies shop local support local businesses uh, yes so point I was making um, and instead they have been cooking meals for me which is a bonus because especially at the moment not got a great sense of time um not always the best at ensuring i am eating healthy meals or eating meals or eating so that's you know that's, that's a good thing for me uh, i say healthy i don't mean like they're making me salads i just mean like meals that you would recognize as part of a normal varied diet um and stuff to eat which is great so they've made me spaghetti bolognese which was very tasty um, and reminded me that I have the wimpiest taste buds when it comes to spice but I knew that already and um, I've also just been eating some of the um, 
very very cheesy uh, macaroni cheese with bacon so good um, so yes I feel like I have done really well out of this because I'm getting noms and I like my noms they're good I feel really valued for the work I'm putting into this because you know I could be working on anything I have countless projects that I'm currently you know doing but um I don't know. I feel quite valued that they'd ask me to make it um, and the, they were the one who said you know they were willing to pay me for this um, and to sort of start the discussion on um, remuneration so if you want to ask a sewing buddy to make you a thing that's how to do it uh, ask them what you know what they think and you can help them work it out um, but you know always come in with it with offering to pay not with making them go okay but you'd have to um, it's directional I find these directions very important um, yeah so I get to make this frilly flouncy fun thing that I probably wouldn't make or wear otherwise um, and I get fed and my friend gets something they want and it's cool so I end up sending them like so many links of so from what you said I was thinking this 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 so I had like three different patterns I linked a few screenshots and we ended up going with a mix of the first two patterns that I linked I say we it's mostly me um, I think part of the whole procrastination on it is that I want to do a good job like I want I want to be proud of this one and I want to be proud of most of the things I make this one in particular, like, I'm not going to be able to in a few weeks or a few months go, mm, right, now I know how to do that. I don't get that sort of second chance at fixing things. What? I teleported. So yeah, we have our line here. I have two more strips ready to be ruffled. I'll put them over there. I need to seam them before I start ruffling. So I have this hem here, and I'll just put my thumb over the dirty bit, um, which is just you know folded under, folded other, until we get held with a straight stitch. So I have taken this thread, which is close to the edge, which I also measured out by doing a drawn thread. Um, I'm just slightly less gung-ho this time. I'm going to be more careful about the total tension on this thread. Um, because I want to start gathering up the entire thing. I'm going to Moving the wrinkles. Move the gathers down. Move a bit of the thread out. I've got this bit moving. And gather it up again. Come along to where it starts being smooth. There we go. We're just going. Slide along. Move those scissors. Most of it is just pretty easy. Do a bit and slide a bit. Slide it, slide it here. And you end up with this piece that has been, you know, further than my, you, you can't tell, but it's further than my arms. And it ends up a very different length by the end of it. So let's, let's just keep going. I 
don't really have a plan for um, the ruffles as yet. I didn't measure, I, I have a rough distance idea of the distance around the whole ensemble, but I haven't really measured, okay, I have this amount of fabric. Yeah, the original piece is about two and a half times the length of that, so that's quite cool. Um, yeah, so that's my ruffle. And this will, of course, be sewn onto my apron and be wonderful. So, on to the next bit. It's sewing time! I don't even know anymore. Yeah, so I'm just gonna fold it as I go. About there ish. Yeah. Yeah. Roll time food to someone else. Which I might be able to get back. I don't know. I don't think they use it, so I can always ask in the future. I have the bodice here and I have my ruffle and I have just a strip of fabric which I can then use to turn around and hide all those raw edges and hopefully protect some of this gathering. So let's protect some of this gathering. Let's go for it. Oh, I decided to use a zipper foot just for that little bit more, mostly a comfort thing I think actually for me. So I know exactly where, what side of the stitches and the gather. Where's my, I'm such a big project, can't find my pin cushion. Because it's gathered, I'm trying to take the time to make sure everything is lined up how I want it to sort of look before I go. There we are, all connected. So I need to... So what I want to do now is tidy over these edges just to keep that nice and I need to attach my neck piece so that's going to be fluffy fluffy and I need to do much much more ruffle attaching and the pocket so catch you later. This is the part I'm going to use for my pockets. I want to round the corner so I'm going to be tracing around here. I've already done one of them, so I know I want the bottom line on this line here and that side there. Nice thing about Gigum, it's got a grid already there for me and I'm just gonna trace that so I know what I'm doing when I'm folding. So then I just need to trim in a little bit so that I can fold all this in and under and have a nice neat pocket for everything. So, thumbs up. Okay, I'm nearing the end of this project and I was just going to show you that I've pinned this ribbon here. See that pin? Just so that I know that this piece and this piece are going to be the same width for the neckties. Um, oh, focus? Yeah, focus. Uh, so once I've sewn these up, 
it will get attached to the piece. I'll give everything a once over, give everything a um, iron, and that will be me. So yeah, I'll finally get this finished, which I started months ago. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> And it is done! Um, I just really have photographs of the finished piece by this point. I sort of wanted to <laughs> I wanted to be handing it over. So that's that's what I've got for you. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, I didn't I did enjoy this project. Uh, it's a bit more involved than some of the things I've been doing recently, so that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Uh, look after yourselves, and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.